Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. This time I'm going to be looking at the brand new Tier A Premium French Medium Tank, the M4A1 Sherman Revelle Orize. Which, even though it is a medium tank, it plays a lot more like a tank destroyer. Yet it has a lot of the medium tank perks. If that sounds like the tank for you, stay tuned. I've got some killer gameplay coming right up. And if you have no interest in this Tier 8, French monster, then I'll let you know what to watch out for when they enter the battlefield and how to exploit a few of the weaknesses of this tank. So this tank has 1,400 hit points, which is fairly standard for a tier 8 vehicle. It weighs just over 35 tons when it's fully equipped, and it has a, a rather mediocre engine power of 460, and so that means that this tank takes a while to get up to speed. It has a specific power of just over 13, whereas when we look at its tier 8 French medium premium tank counterpart, the AMX CDC it has a specific power of over 35, but that is one of the most ridiculous vehicles for speed in the game. And so the M4A1 isn't going to be the fastest of tanks, and it's also limited with regards to its top speed limit to 40 kilometers an hour, which is the same as the Centurion Mark 1, the Centurion 71, and the FE4202. So if you're a player of those tanks, you'll know what you're getting when it comes to this vehicle. Now its traverse speed is 40 degrees a second, which is rather nice, especially considering that this vehicle has a tank destroyer-esque gun. And when you combine this with a turret traverse of 42 degrees a second, that makes this thing quickly able to re-engage targets, unlike other turreted tank destroyers. Now the armor on this tank is enough to take a high explosive shell, but barely. It's 50 on the front, 38 on the side, and 38 on the rear, and it's a tall tank. The CDC feels like a big vehicle, and the M4A1 is much taller than it, but thankfully not as long. And if you were hoping for turret armor, well it's 63, 63, and 63, so unless you're pulling off a miracle bounce, you're not going to be getting too many ricochets in this tank. Or at least that's what you would think but the turret armor is actually okay at least around the mandler as we can see here it ranges between about 100 to 175 with right behind the gun being up to 230 millimeters thick meaning that if you use the gun depression of this tank you're quite likely to be able to bounce at least lower tier targets but let's look at the real feature of this tank and that is this 105 millimeter gun this gun is an absolute beast. It's got a 4.69 rounds a minute rate of fire with 200 millimeters of penetration on its APCR rounds as standard. Now this vehicle can fire premium rounds as well, and I'd just like to take this moment to show you just how cheap at the moment these standard rounds are. They cost 580, and you're doing 390 alpha damage with this 105 millimeter gun for just 580 credits. That makes this one of the most economical large caliber guns in the game at the moment. And if 200 millimeters of penetration isn't enough for you, especially when you're going to be engaging up to tier 10 targets in this tank as it does not get preferential matchmaking, then the heat rounds, they're, they're gonna cost you 4,800 a shot. But if you do manage to penetrate those, you're still going to make credits upon them. Now the accuracy of this tank is okay, it's 0.36. And its aim time is, well, at least it's not disastrous, it's 2.8. But when we look at similar kind of tank destroyers at this tier, such as the Chariot tier, the 105mm gun is, is a lot better than this. I feel like this gun on the Charioteer would be good on a tier 9 medium tank if it was just a little bit better. So I'd say this is kind of like tier 8.75, whereas I feel that this 105mm on the M4A1 is kind of tier 8.5. One of the other great features of this tank is that it does get 390 meters view range, which means that when you combine it with coated optics and either a premium consumable or a very skilled crew, you're going to be able to get up to that spotting distance cap of 445 meters. But anyway, that's quite enough. Enough theory crafting, let's take a look to see how this beast performs in some gameplay. So here we go, the first of two games that I want to show you in the M4A1. This time we are going to be top tier. Roughly about half of the enemy team, oh just under half actually, are tier 8. With a glut of tier 7s, ah, it's about half and half with tier 7s and tier 6s on the enemy team. So really this means this is a nice matchup for the M4A1. And so, what does a nice matchup really mean for this tank? Well, it means that when you hit the enemy, that your alpha damage is is very significant. Uh, 390 alpha damage hitting a tier 6 is a lot more impressive than when it hits a tier 10 tank. So there's that threat of the alpha damage, and having that 390 alpha damage at tier 8 is just so much more impressive than it is than having on the tier 9 medium tanks. 
And also remember that this vehicle gets 200 millimeters of penetration with its standard rounds and 250 with its heat rounds. Now 200, when you're engaging tier six and tier seven targets, is very, very, very competitive. And it's, it's still kind of competitive at tier eight, but there are a lot of standard vehicles that do get better penetration. When we look at the top tank on the enemy team, that IS-3, he is packing 226 millimeters of penetration, I believe, with his standard 122 millimeter gun. So, 200 millimeters of pen is, is enough. As we can see here, it's enough to go through the front of that T-44 with our first penetrating shot of the game. 338 damage done. And we managed to absorb a shot from a KV-3. If he was using the top gun, which he was, and I can see using my damage panel, he hit us in the mantlet. Remember in the garage, I said that's pretty much the only part of this vehicle that's going to reliably be able to take damage. So what we're doing here is we're locking our gun in place and trying to aim at other people. He came back into the exact same position, and so that allows us to put a hit into him. 394 damage done to that tier 7 Soviet heavy tank. And now this tier 7 British medium tank, the Comet wants to come and have a look at us. So look at the bloom on the gun. Uh, the accuracy is not incredible really. And the aim time, well get a feel from it here. Whereas the, the turret and the tracks turn very quickly on this tank as you saw there. And that's lovely for re-engaging targets. Now this IS-6 has flanked us, we're reversing steadily. I think we auto-aimed at that guy there and luckily our shot managed to go in. With only 200 millimeters of penetration, penetrating an IS-6 is a, is a chancy thing. We're going to try and aim for his driver's hatch, and there we go. We managed to put one into the driver's hatch, which is actually thinner, I believe, than the other frontal armor on the IS-6. However, maybe I should have shot the side of the turret like I do now, but it looks like the shell actually dipped and went down. He's only got one health left, can you believe it? So I reload a high explosive round to finish him off, but my team manages to do so. Now also get a feel for the reload on the M4A1. I decided that I didn't want to engage my opponents here with a high explosive round, and so I reload an APCR round. However, unfortunately, they managed to pull back just before we finish reloading. So probably a misplay there by me. I should have just kept the high explosive shell in the tank and, and used it on the Comet. I would have still probably detracted him and done a couple of hundred damage to him. So you can't afford to reload willy-nilly in this tank like you can in other mediums because of the high alpha damage. Cracking shot there right through the side of the enemy Soviet tier 8 medium tank. Puts him down. And we're aiming for the Comet. Can we find the Comet? Luckily he gets tracked and so we can put a big shot into the back of his tank. However, it rolls quite low. 350 out of 390. That's not what we wanted. But still, you guys might be seeing just how quickly you can pick up the damage in a tier 8 medium. We've done 3,000 damage in the first four minutes of this game. And that's impressive in, in pretty much every tier 8 medium tank. Just the alpha damage. Yeah, you just seem to just clock it up in this vehicle. And it is lovely. And also, as we can see here, you've got the mobility to get where you need and the flexibility with the fully traversable turret be able to engage your opponents as this is a medium vehicle although i feel like it's almost a medium tank destroyer hybrid i guess a lot like a sherman firefly right so we nail the back of that is6 taking him out the game putting us up to now 3500 damage we can put one into the side of the super pershing and we take a hit from him but we've got 1400 hit points which is 400 more than most tier 8 tank destroyers which means that taking a shot from a 90 millimeter a 90mm gun, like the Super Pershing has, isn't such a big deal. So my team now play Hunt the Artillery, and it ends with a bit of a one-sided affair here. But that's what I would expect, considering how statistically unbalanced these two teams were. Hopefully this battle highlighted the powers of the Sherman A41 Revalorize. This 105mm gun with its 390 alpha damage certainly picks apart equal and lower tiered opponents very quickly indeed. While the Sherman hull gets you where you need to go and this very flexible turret with I think it's 42 degrees a second traverse speed allows you to quickly re-engage your targets. And having 7 degrees of gun depression all around the tank means that you can work ridge lines very well indeed, unlike most turreted tank destroyers, at least at high tier.
Let's just take a very quick look at the post-game stats before we get stuck into some more gameplay. So a certainly very profitable game here. This was a high caliber medal for the 3,944 damage that we did with 1,131 base experience points with a little bit of an addition of premium experience there. It gives us 1,867 total. But the main thing to highlight is that we made 110 thousand credits this game giving us a total profit of 95,000 credits in this six minute game and that's really why you want to be playing your tier 8 premium tanks they're not as competitive as regular tanks but they make that huge amount of credits while you're playing them and because it looks like we we're only exposing our turret this game we actually managed to block 525 damage so it is worth noting that while on paper this tank looks like it should have no armor that mantlet is pretty troll indeed so we've seen how the M4A1 dominates when it's top tier. Let's see when it's bottom tier. So this time, we are not the top dog. We're going to have to deal with some high tier tanks on the enemy team. And what does that really mean for the M4A1? Well, remember that the standard penetration on this gun is 200 millimeters. Now let's think, obviously LTTB, that's, that's easy. Speer Panzers, yep, fine. Artillery, no problem. T28 prototype starting to get a little bit more tricky with 200 millimeters of penetration at least frontally t28 same deal yak panther 2 i can't hit his superstructure i'll have to hit that hull armor and hope that it's not angled isu hopefully he's not angled either t34 that's okay hull wise but i can't really pressure his turret too much unless i hit the weak points on top the is3 on the other hand that's where 200 millimeters of penetration it's it's enough some of the time but you can't be reliable and depend on your shots against an is3 frontally unfortunately for us the accuracy of the tank reared its ugly head and the shell went high into his turret i was hoping that it would have gone into the side of the vehicle there he was over angling and then we should have been able to go through him with the 200 millimeters of penetration now tanks such as the e75 gosh no i'm not penning that frontally with 200 reliably at all T-123, ha ha ha, yeah, I'll have to get super lucky and hit his lower plate very, very close to the tracks. The T-57 Heavy is the, is the same deal, really. His turret is pretty troll. If he angles his turret, I'm going to be able to go through it, but... Yeah, it's just... this. Is, what I'm trying to, to let you guys know is that 200 millimeters of penetration, it's, it's enough to be fairly comfortable, but you're still going to struggle quite a lot. Luckily for us, the T-57 Heavy has angled his turret. So that means we can put one right into the side there. Getting a nice flat surface on his turret, which is designed to be pointed directly at his opponents. Now there's an enemy Tier 8 Soviet tank destroyer. The fearsome ISU-152 with the BL-10. We're going to go have a quick peek at him and put some shots in. This enemy T-57 Heavy starts to unload on us. Now we use the dead IS-3 to evade his shots. But unfortunately, we spot that the ISU-152 is aiming directly towards us. We bounce off the front of his hull, not expecting that, and now decide to pull back so he can't shoot us and try and deal with this T-57 Heavy. He's fired a few times. Does he have any more left? Looks like he does, but it bounces off our turret. Great result there. Sounded like a double ricochet. Did that hit my gun and then the turret, or did it hit my hull armor and then my turret? I think it probably hit the gun and then ricocheted off the turret. Quite lucky. However, our second shell that hits him does not go through. So, so far I believe that we've fired five shots this game and two of them have penetrated. And we've been shooting get a tier 8 tank, gosh, two times out of those five at least. Or well, three times out of those five, sorry. Luckily, the Spearpanzer was a little too cheeky there, trying to squeeze out a shot against us. And he regretted that significantly as we destroy his vehicle with our 105 millimeter gun so um, i'm i'm kind of concerned about where that t57 heavy is but remember I, i'm a tier 8 tank i shouldn't really feel that i have to deal with the tier 10s on the enemy team fair enough the m4a1 can be a great support vehicle but trying to engage tier 10s is is not a very clever idea at least frontally with this tank so what is the role of a support vehicle? Well, obviously, try and add to your allies' damage. If you manage to get the side or the rear of an enemy tank, or you track him and hold him in place, that's really what you want to be doing in these, in these bad matchups. 
but you can't go toe to toe with your opponents. Now there's a T-123 round that corner and I certainly don't want to meet him frontally. So I decide to make my way into the town. Well hopefully I'm going to be able to shoot these tanks in the side. Oh we've got a lovely shot right into the T-34 there. 390 damage done, that is the exact average of this 105mm taking that tier 8 tank out of the game. So right now we're in a very interesting situation. The enemies have holed up around here and they've still got two of their tier 10s left alive and an E75 as well, which is nothing to, to take lightly. That T1 3 frontally is an absolute monster. We definitely don't want to fight him. I was hoping that the Speerpanzer or the 59 Patton on my team would be able to get his flank and not get caught by the T57 Heavy. Luckily for us, however, the enemy have decided to totally forego their artillery and we have a T62A and a 1390 who's going to go and remove that dangerous tier 8 American artillery piece on the enemy team. So it looks like the Speerpanzer has managed to find the back of the T123 slash T57 heavy. Hopefully he can harass them without getting caught. Oh, well the T57 heavy shuts down the 59 pattern. Maybe the Speerpanzer will be able to catch him reloading. But what I can do instead is flank this T-123, the perfect opportunity for me. A great shot there into the back of his tank, also taking his tracks off, but unfortunately for us, he has a repair kit. Now we look at putting in a second shot and try to find a shot. I decide to just track him and hold him in place. If I'd aim slightly higher, I could have probably gone through his armor without going through his tracks. But the T-123 was remarkably mobile and managed to turn his tank around and take a punt at us. Luckily the archways de deflected his shot and we evade the wrath of that 155mm gun. Finally the T-62A, the Speerpanzer and the 1390 managed to overwhelm the T-57 Heavy and we get to venture on into other parts of the map to hopefully outflank the C-75 and the E-3. And just check out the mobility of this vehicle. Unfortunately our shell didn't quite go in there. I was hoping that one would have we were able to quickly pull off that shot. While this tank does almost have a tank destroyer-esque gun, it certainly has the gun handling more of a medium tank. And that allows you to quickly re-engage your targets. And the mobility is just enough to be able to outflank them. Certainly 40 kilometers an hour isn't going to do very well on gigantic open maps, such as steps, but on a map such as this on Siegfried Line, which is very central, especially in this assault game mode you see me playing. It is enough. As we finish off the tier 9 German heavy tank on the enemy team, picking up our fourth kill in this tier 10 matchup. So a solid game here for the M4A1 Sherman, showing you what you can do with this vehicle in a tier 10 matchup and without excessive use of premium ammunition. Let's take a look at the post-game stats to see how much profit we made in this game. So we made 78 thousand credits this game of 1890 experience points giving us a profit of 65,000 for a rather mediocre amount of damage 2400 done here but we did secure four kills and because we were bottom tier shooting at tier 10 tanks that means that we got the most experience in this game and so that is the m4a1 sherman revalorize and i think it's one of the best tier 8 premiums that wargaming have put into the game in a while i certainly think it's at least more novel than the 59 pattern and I think it'll be all round more competitive than the Kanon and Jagdpans or at least a lot more fun and flexible to play. I think the fact that this tank has kind of a tier 8.5 gun is almost like a tank destroyer gun but having the flexibility of the medium tank hull and the turret just makes this a real pleasure to play. A lot of fans of the AMX-30 prototype or the AMX-30B might want to purchase one of these to train up their crew while still making a tasty profit at the same time. But I also think it's unusual that this tank has come into the game after the AMX CDC was just so recent. And I don't think they're going to be removing the AMX CDC. It doesn't feel broken. Uh, it doesn't have preferential matchmaking. Lots of the vehicles that Wargaming are targeting to introduce into the game don't have preferential matchmaking in their replacements for tanks that do. But the AMX CDC doesn't. So it just looks like we're going to have the joy of playing two tier 8 premium French medium tanks. So your next question might be, is it worth it? Is the M4A1 Revalorice going to be worth the price tag? Well, if it costs as much as the AMX CDC and you don't already have one, 
then I think that this might be a good choice for you. Hopefully it'll cost about seven to 8,000 gold. And I think at that price point, if you don't already have a tier eight premium medium tank and you're looking to pick one up that matches your play style, then this might be the tank for you. I also think a lot of the British medium tank drivers such as Centurion 1, Centurion 7 1 and FE4202 might think about picking one of these up because it really will match the playstyle that you've developed in those vehicles. Either way, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please do consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about this tier 8 French premium medium tank. Do you think it's going to be too good? Do you think it's about balanced? Does it really interest you? Do you want to pick one up as soon as it comes out? Or do you think maybe you're an AMX CDC driver and you have no interest in picking up a tank that really is, is at tier 5 and tier 6? And is it stretching it to put this thing up to tier 8? And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.